PHP is run, uh, used to build a lot of the world's best uh, things. I, I would call them websites, because they're, but they're often uh, apps on your phone and other things. Uh, Facebook uses it, WordPress uses it, uh, on and on. But uh, Zend is here, and we're going to talk to developers about what they're doing to make PHP rock for your team and uh, help you develop faster and better. So who are you? I'm Andy Goodmans. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Zen. And I started to get involved with PHP in 1997. So I'm one of the co original co-architects of PHP. Very cool. Uh, tell me about Zen. Who, who, is, who needs Zen? So Zen is the PHP company. Uh, and we really focus on helping companies who are using PHP for big, you know, business critical apps. We help them professionalize their application delivery process yeah. uh, and really help them in, uh, accelerate innovation. Because yeah. in this day and age of web and mobile, right, companies have to be moving much, much faster uh, and at the same time also increase the quality of what they're delivering. Just to give uh, people a taste of what you do, uh, you add uh, tools to like a web page that uh, show me all sorts of stuff as a developer, how many database calls I'm making, uh, mm -hmm. how much time did the page take to get loaded. All, uh, tell me what, what you do for developers. Yeah, so you know, we've always focused on the end-to-end -end application delivery lifecycle, yeah. so helping developers be more productive, helping DevOps folks really automate the full end-to-end uh, -end application delivery cycle, and then helping manage apps. But we felt that there was something missing in the market. We felt that we could do more for developers to really change the game in how they can, how productive they can be and the quality of the code they can deliver. So we created this new thing called Z-Ray that gives developers X-Ray vision into their code as they're developing it. Could, could we see what it, it, sort of what it shows developers and yeah, why yeah, it's so absolutely. It's such a big deal? Yeah, I can do a little uh, live demo if yeah. you want. Um, so for those folks who don't know PHP, there are a lot of popular apps in the PHP space like Magento, Drupal, WordPress. Uh, and I've actually got a lot of those apps installed here on top of Zen server. Uh, I'm going to go into a Magento app. Uh, remember, this is stock Magento out of the box. I haven't changed anything. It's how, uh, what happens when you download Magento. Magento is an e-commerce application. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do at Zen is really change how Magento developers get their work done. Uh, so you can see me, I just clicked on the Sony Vio product entry within the Magento application. What you may have noticed is there's a, li there's a little toolbar down here that suddenly, disappeared, that suddenly appeared. Yeah. That toolbar is not part of Magento. We actually, if you run Magento on top of our product and server, we actually inject that toolbar into the application. And what the toolbar starts showing you is a lot of information about what just happened. So you can see that this application just took 1.2 seconds to execute. You see memory usage. You can see database queries. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, what you can see here is 76 database queries for one page. You know, right. so if you wonder why people, and I'm not even a developer, but I know that yeah. probably increases latency and problems and things won't exactly. load, or uh, the database if it's getting slammed is going to uh, be a. a, a, a a gatekeeper, right? It's going to keep right. the page from loading properly, yeah. right? Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so you want to cut down the number of database calls? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, 76 database queries for one page is not good news. Yeah. Uh, and people often say the Magento is a bit slow. We love it. We're actually users of Magento, but it definitely indicates that there are areas that, you know, that specific application can improve. And in fact, we're big believers that with this new capability, if we can provide more information to developers, they will automatically be able to create much, much better applications. So let's back up. So that gives us a little taste. We'll go mm -hmm. deeper into that. Uh, you said I'm running on top of Zen server, right? Yeah. Uh, how do I get that? <laughs> Zen server? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm running WordPress at Rackspace. Right. So I'm not running on Zen server. Yeah. So, so Zen, Zen server is basically an application platform. It's, a, it's basically a PHP stack. Okay. Uh, we have some value add components like Zero in the PHP stack. You can just download it from our website. Uh, we also have pre-created Do you instances. work on all the modern clouds like Rackspace yeah. Cloud and Amazon? And it's uh, cloud ready. Uh, you, we have customers on Rackspace, on Amazon, uh, on Google and so on. So it's cloud centric, it's auto scaling. 
Uh, it's built for the cloud. It's a cloud fabric. Um, but basically, you install it exactly the same way you would install a PHP from the Linux repository. Got it. So same way you install Linux distribution, you install Zen server. The only difference is you get all these other goodies like Z-Ray that come with it. Very cool. And how much does this cost? Um, so you can buy Z-Ray for about $20 a month, uh, which ends up being about $0.03 cents an hour. Yeah. So we absolutely believe that, you know, you And that's $20 a month, whether you're uh, eBay or whether you're uh, a little startup? Yeah, so the $20 a month is in development. Now, Z-Ray also transitions to production, and there are a lot of really nice production capabilities that it actually uh, delivers, including other production capabilities we have. And that starts at about $195 per month. Got it. Uh, but from a developer point of view, getting all these benefits, it's a very low entry point. All right, so we got it set up, we yeah. got everything running, and now we got the toolbar. <laughs> so let's go back to right. seeing what else, uh, uh, what else uh, uh, you guys show us. Yeah, so basically, as I said, it just injects itself into the application. Um, and as you click around the application, this is going to refresh for you automatically. So we can show you things like you know, critical errors, like high memory usage in this case, uh, PHP warnings and errors that you have in the application. So you can see here Magento ships with an error called undefined index secure. Yeah. Doesn't feel very secure. That's a bit scary. It's probably something a developer should actually take a look at. Uh, we already talked about database queries. You get full profiling in, uh, information and you even get to look into certain things like your session variables. Interesting. Something that devel for developers, that's actually a really hard thing to figure out. Like what exactly changed in my sessions in this request? Um, Z-Ray makes it incredibly easy. It's actually one of my favorite features. Uh, we give you a full diff of what was the session data before, what was it afterwards. If it's your own app, it's super, very, um, super valuable. But if you're extending something like Magento or Drupal, it's even more valuable because yeah. certain elements of the app may be changing your session data and you're not even aware of it. You're going to see it here. But what we're really excited about right now is we've kind of taken this whole idea of giving developers deep insight into their PHP app as they're developing it and starting to move it up into the application level. So we created this extens extensibility API that allows developers to expose semantic information from within the application. So it's not just PHP information, yeah. it's you know, who's the logged in user and all sorts of other things that are triggered within the application. And we actually pre-built Z-Ray plugins for Magento, Drupal, WordPress, Symfony Framework, Zen Framework wow. for Z-Ray. And so here you can see an example of Magento. And I'm not a Magento expert, so I don't know how to explain like every single detail here. Uh, but for example, uh, we heard from Magento that for developers understanding how the page is laid out and what blocks are actually making the, up the page is really difficult. Yeah. So we built a capability here that actually shows you what the Magento blocks look like. Um, it also has, Magento also, also has its own uh, event mechanism. Uh, knowing which events are triggered is really hard. It's not just a PHP thing, it's an application architecture issue. Yeah. So you actually get to see the events that are triggered. So the whole idea here is give the developer as much information in browser in his usual development workflow so he doesn't have to change the way he works, but get, he gets all this valuable information. Uh, we really wanted to fit into the code, save, hit, refresh workflow. That's what web developers do three, four hundred times a day at yeah, least. Yeah. And we just don't want to make them change how they work. Yeah. And we think this really accomplishes it. Now, does this uh, work alongside something like New Relic or does it compete with it? Or do you need Re New Relic? Uh, uh, yeah. you, this, so the, the focus of Z-Ray is... Because new, new Relic is you check in code and you see uh, the health of your systems, Correct. right? So you see if Correct. the system got faster right. or slower right. or, or if things are up or down, right? Yeah, so both in server and New Relic have APM capabilities. The focus of APM is usually when the application is ready, deployed and running, how to get insight. Uh, Z-Ray actually tries to tackle something differently. So you can absolutely use New Relic and Zen Server and Z-Ray together. Uh, Z-Ray really tries to go a lot deeper while the code is being developed. So it can really go and give you a point in time per request view um, of what you need to change in your code. Now there is a production aspect to that. But again, that production aspect is really focused at very deep drill down. Uh, into a specific request yeah. versus what your APM usually does, which is show you over time. So you will usually want to use both of those things together, an APM solution um, and this kind of solution. Do 
Um, does it help you debug your app? Because it, it, does it show breakpoints in the code and stuff like yeah. that, where, where, or take you to the right part of the code where there's a problem, or where like those the seventy six database yeah. queries are? You know? So that's a great, uh, great, great question. I can actually uh, show you an example. So, you know, we believe that with the uh, information we're exposing, we're already giving you a lot that you don't even need a spawn of debugger. But we, we do give a go a bit deeper in showing you this information. So for example, let me sort the queries by how much time they took and we see the, the, the query that took the longest is the one I'm showing right now. If I click on this little button, I actually show a backtrace of exactly what, how the query got assembled, where it came from in the code. Yeah. So we actually take a problem that we detect and we can show you exactly where it was assembled and how it was assembled and what arguments. Now, if you want to go even deeper, we do have debugging capabilities in our ID. If you look at this little uh, bug here in Z-Ray, if you click on that, and I don't have it set up, yeah. I could click on debug current page if I had the ID set up, and it will actually put a breakpoint, and it will start a full debugging session. Wow. So. Wow. Um, hmm. Does it start uh, telling me what to do to fix my code? Yeah. Or does it just show me, hey, you did 76 database yeah. queries? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know, if you have experience, you know that's probably a bad thing. Yeah. But um, a, a new developer might not yeah. know that, right? If somebody who's playing around with, uh, and trying to learn code probably yeah. doesn't know that. Um, it, are you thinking about going to that level of saying, hey, you probably shouldn't do 76, and here's how to fix right. it? Or? Yeah, so we, we've had a lot of ideas in that space. So right now, we're focused at just showing them. Yeah. Uh, and we believe a lot of developers, that's going to be enough to uh, help them act on it. But we've absolutely thought about that and, and started to think about, you know, how could we start actually providing hints and tips on how to deal with certain issues, how to deal with certain memory issues, how to deal with certain, you know, slow database queries. Could you implement caching here uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it's definitely something we would like to uh, do long term. Right now we're focused on making sure we give you visibility. But absolutely, like everything on this planet right now, right? You, you want to convert data into action. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there to do that. Since one page um, might have data coming from factual for a map or uh, you know, Instagram for a photo or something mm. like that, a lot of cl cloud services that you're talking to APIs all mm. over the place and assembling them onto a surface, either on a phone or on a mm. laptop. Does it show you the health of those systems as well, or give you tips for how to deal with those systems? Or so, I, so you I, should be in zero in zero product management. Yeah. <laughs> we we have a lot of thoughts in that space. The way we built this plugin API is where we could actually start adding not only we have a tracing capability, not only taking like SDKs like AWS SDK or Rackspace SDK for PHP, and kind of showing which calls are being made. So that's very easy to implement, and we're actually on the path of doing that. Yeah. Uh, but in addition, we could also create plugins that actually could show you some of you know, your current state in the Rackspace cloud, like how much storage are you using, um, how many machines do you have up right now, and so on and so forth. So absolutely, the idea here is to provide you more and more context about what you're doing in your face, right? So you don't have to start going and looking at five different dashboards to try and figure out you know, what's happening. Uh, it's all in your face as a developer and you know similar to what monitoring did yeah. right for operations this should really be your cockpit right when you're developing code let's talk about mobile because we, we've been looking at yeah. a desktop browser that uh, does this show up on a mobile app as well if you're using php yeah. in a mobile app so mobile is an interesting beast because you know if you're getting to if you're accessing your web application just through a mobile browser like a safari or something like that you will see Z-Ray, right? So you can see it on your iPhone, your iPad. Uh, we, have, we, we even have a cool picture of that you know, or showing Android. up in a, or Android. Yeah. And we even have a cool picture of that showing up in a Tesla dashboard, the Tesla built-in browser. Wow. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of work anywhere. Uh, the problem, though, happens when you have native apps, right? You have a native app built in Objective-C or, you know, I'll do the Android plug here for yeah. in Java. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you have an issue because we can't inject this little toolbar into an Objective-C app, uh, and that Objective-C app is making API calls into the server. Yeah. So what we built was a new capability called Z-Ray Live, uh, where we will actually intercept that call server side, and you get the same kind of information for API calls that are not browser-based. Wow. Wow. 
What have you learned by building this company? That's uh, pretty. Uh, <laughs> I think what we I think what we learned um, is you know the market is changing really really fast, and I think that change is accelerating. Um, how, how is it changing? Give me a, a sense of what you're seeing. I, you know, I think we're seeing a lot of change around mobility, right? And when I say mobility, it's not just mobile devices, it's everything, right? Cars, devices, cloud services, watches APIs, coming. watches, Google Glass, yeah. <laughs> implants, not quite yet, but soon. <laughs> soon. Coming uh, soon. Coming soon. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of change around kind of the, the reach of applications. Uh, we're seeing a lot of change around cloud, um, because I think as the focus moves towards reach, um, and automation and DevOps and so on, that starts pulling with it, right? Infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. So definitely cloud is a, is a huge enabler uh, to this change. And then just in general, you know, just the, the notion of creating more context for users, and I know you wrote a book on it, yeah. um, you know, context and, and personalization, that's really starting to change how people need to think about their applications, how they build them, um, how they deliver them and where they host them. Yeah. And so, you know, for us it's interesting, you know, things are just changing so quickly and uh, that's one of the reasons we actually innovated around Z-Ray uh, because we felt that, that, n that the need to move faster but increase quality at the same time is an under underserved uh, requirement yeah. of this fast, uh, you know, changing pace. And so we're really trying to make sure that you know we we serve kind of where the market is going, and um, you know people kind of ask me, you've been in the PHP space for many years, doesn't it start getting boring? I'm like, no, because PHP is just the how, but if you look at the what, it's changed so radically over the past few years, it's always new. Yeah. We're never doing the same. Anything else you, you'd like to show me, or uh, I could show you some of the mobile capabilities let's if you'd do like. It. I have my mobile device here. Unfortunately, yeah. it's an iPhone 4s. I yeah. have pre-ordered the iPhone 6, <laughs> but you, you'll, you'll do you see. know at Apple they made the engineers use old stuff uh -huh. so that they uh, would build code that would run on the old stuff <laughs> <laughs> and not and not overstrip the uh, capabilities because you give yeah. somebody a new uh, six plus like right. this this has a lot better process or a lot better so we, we actually did the same internally because we have a, our id uh, zen studio uh, that team wanted everyone wanted to upgrade to the latest and greatest hardware with ssd drives and we're like you know we have a lot of users who don't um, so we actually uh, stopped some of them from upgrading exactly for that reason you want them to feel the pain if someone who's not on the most recent device, right, yeah. um, is feeling kind of, you know, slow. So we absolutely, I, I completely subscribe to that thought. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, so this is a 4S, so at least, you know, it works on a, le on a legacy device too. Um, what I, you can see, you can see that on my screen now, I'm basically using AirPlay uh, to mirror that application. Yeah. Let me just kind of move that, to try and see if I can move that to the side. Um, what, what you're going to see, now the problem here is that I'm going to launch an Objective-C app. What I'm going to launch is a, a WordPress app. Okay, this is the official WordPress app that you basically download from the Apple Store as is. Yep. Um, the problem is that it, obviously ZRA cannot be injected here, right? Yep. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Zen Server and we have this new capability called Z-Ray Live. And what Z-Ray Live is, it actually starts listening to inbound traffic and to API calls. So now I'm just gonna go into my WordPress demo app and I'll do a new post. Basically say, you know, hi, Rackspace viewers. Okay, and I'm gonna publish that post. Yep. And what you could probably see is you can see here that a lot of these requests um, started to show up. Yep. And so I've actually trapped what came in from the mobile device on the server side, and I get to see all the same information you saw injected in the browser before, including WordPress specific information. So we have a WordPress plugin that will actually work both on API calls and on HTML based uh, information. So that is, um, that's a really cool way to be productive Th on uh, mobile. Does this help people figure out security issues? It, it can. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell it as a, you know, a security uh, solution, uh, but absolutely, like when I showed you the Magento example of like an undefined variable secure and so on, it can start showing you, right, things that are happening, errors and so on, 
They may not be visible if you look at the web page. Actually, the biggest problem in web development is very often the web page looks great, but something's going wrong on the server side that you can't quite see. Yeah. So we give you more in, more context and more um, visibility into things that could become real issues. Got it. Um, is there any uh, a cost or, or consequence of using Zend? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the old days when we actually didn't have very good processors, of yeah. putting something like this would take you know a couple percent of the processor away today that's not a big deal but is is there anything N not really I mean because you're using this in development you know there's obviously some overhead as we're collecting all this information but but because you're doing it as part of your development workflow it doesn't really cost you anything now if you're using us in production and this is where it's very different from APM because APM has to really think about aggregation and runtime performance and so on uh, Z-Ray will is works specifically when you ask it to in production. So for example, you have a website, you know, thousands of users coming to the website, high traffic, but there's a problem on the website. You can actually with Z-Ray give a developer access to Z-Ray in production, but only they will see it. Yeah. None of the other users will. So there won't be any negative impact on production either because it's just happening for one request for one person. Yeah. And that's really cool. It's a really cool feature uh, which I haven't shown where you can actually just send the developer a URL and they can get Z-Ray in a production environment live. I was just thinking on, on mobile, uh, because the user can turn off so many things, like you, you can turn off background uh, processing, you can turn off GPS access, right? That, that changes how your app might uh, fail, right? Mm -hmm. Do you do any of that kind of uh, work? Like if this thing is not available, this will happen? Or, or we, is it just to let you watch the, the system work? Yeah, so we don't, we don't really focus on the client side. Yeah. Um, because we think client side debugging, there are a lot of tools there. And you know, we think the big, big challenge is actually figuring out what's happening on the server side, because it starts becoming more and more difficult to kind of make that transition from client to server. So our key focus is server side. Um, but there may be certain things in what you said that actually have a server-side component, like you're talking about location-based information, right? Usually that is processed on the server-side yeah. because you have to get your inventory based on your server-side information and so on. So you would actually see with Z-Ray that information coming in from the client-side. So for example, location-based data, and you could actually, you would start seeing it show up probably in things like database queries and so on. So I do think we help that indirectly, um, but it's once it hits the server side. Very cool. Um, is there a way to uh, use this with some load testing uh, services and watch the health of the system and see if under load it behaves differently than if uh, you don't have a load on the system? So Z-Ray itself is not focused on, on load testing. Yeah. We do have APM capabilities which can no, give you information. I, but I figure you're going to use somebody else, you know, like a Sosta or something, right. to, to create some load and, and yeah, yeah, maybe no. watch the health of your system. You correct, know, so. correct. But I think, you know, yeah. so Z-Ray specifically does, um, n well, actually, that's, there's a two-piece answer to that. During load testing, um, our APM capabilities could fire up some issue. What we did do, which is very unique, is we actually um, connected those capabilities with, uh, with Z-Ray, with, run, with uh, runtime Z-Ray events. So here's an example of, we have something called URL Insight. Yep. So if you think about APM tools, most APM tools give you this kind of information, 10 most time consuming URLs, 10 slowest URLs, and so on and so forth. What's unique about us is we're actually attaching Z-Ray snapshots to that. And maybe and that really answers the question, which is if you now have an event once in a while so that we don't actually interfere with the performance of the servers, we have to be very careful in how frequently we do it, we will actually get you a full Z-Ray trace. And that could then make the connection between we had a problem during our load testing and very specific deep dive information around what happened. Oh. And so we, we are trying to connect those dots and create additional value by going very, very deep uh, when a problem occurs. Oh, that's cool. Um, I could talk to you for a while. <laughs> and I'm not even a developer. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming yeah. in and give me a, a taste of what Zen does and, and how you're helping the lives of programmers. I think the one thing to take away here, and it's not only for developers, it's actually also for the head of development and the folks who are really in charge of overall application delivery, is it can be done better if you implement 
high level of automation, right? Uh, a lot of consistency across the life cycle. You use tools like Z-Ray early on in the development cycle. So you bring up the quality, right? Very early on. You absolutely can hold the stick at both ends and move faster while you're also increasing quality at the same time. In the past, people thought those two things were in conflict. There is no reason why companies shouldn't be able to do both. And you know, as you know, in this new age of mobile contextual experiences, companies have to move faster. You know, they have to increase revenue by driving new, by implementing new business models that are really cloud and mobile focused. Um, tell me about your company. How, did, uh, how, how many people work there, and how did you get funded? How did it get built? So uh, we Zen is a PHP company. Um, we're about 150 employees, uh, as I said, really focused at helping companies accelerate their application delivery. Uh, we're venture backed, um, but you know, we already have you know, sizable revenues and um, you know, are doing well. Uh, our focus um, really has been around helping, on, helping companies run their applications uh, better. In the early days of Zend, we had a lot of tools and services um, that we were focused on, but really today we're a runtime company, yeah. right? We deliver these kind of runtime capabilities on multiple clouds, on-premise, um, and that's our big focus area. Yeah, very cool. Where do we get it? Uh, Zen.com on the Zen server page. Yeah. Uh, there is a clear indication of how you can download Z-Ray. Very cool. Thank you so much yeah. for coming in and showing to me. Thanks for having me.